The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome to our Step Warm Floor training and uh, Step Warm Floor and Wood Flooring. We're happy you can join us with us tonight. And uh, taking your time out of your busy schedule, uh, if you guys on the on the uh, West Coast, you might be getting off work to uh, uh, check this webinar out. And if you're on the East Coast, well, perhaps you're sitting in your easy chair after lunch. So appreciate you taking the time, spending the time with us. It's been a few, a uh, couple months, three, three, four months since we've had a webinar here. So we uh, welcome you to join uh, this webinar. And uh, we got some uh, webinars that are going to be hosted by my colleagues uh, uh, soon here in the next uh, next week and so forth. Uh, about HeatMyFloors.com, uh, we are a subsidiary of Wright Hennepin Electric Cooperative uh, Electric Association. We're located in Rockford, Minnesota, so just west of the Twin Cities area. I'd say about 35 minutes west of downtown Minneapolis. Um, we're a distributor of some uh, fine products that, like Step Warm Floor, what we're going to talk about here today, but also some other products that you see there. So we encourage you to go and check those out at a later date and see if they may have interest in your business or in your applications. Uh, so a little bit about me. Um, I'll be your host here this evening. Uh, we're going to get into about a 45-minute a presentation regarding wood floors and step warm floor. And then we're going to have a, a few minutes at the end of the presentation to talk about uh, some questions and Q&A that we'll spend some time on too. So hopefully we're going to wrap it up guaranteed. 8 p.m. Uh, Central Daylight Time. We're not going to move past that point. So, my name is Dennis Schrummel. Again, welcome. I'm the Heat My uh, Floors Product Manager. I've been here and employed uh, by Wright Hennepin Electric for uh, 22 years now, and have been uh, training contractors, HVAC builders, remodelers, architects, you name it, uh, on this product and other products that we carry. So, um, going to remind you too. Uh, we have the future webinar schedules coming up. And as you can see, we have them just in each uh, next week. It starts already with uh, uh, Step Warm Floor and Carpeting on Thursday, March 21st. And as you can see there that uh, we have the next uh, following presentations are just uh, one week right after. So each, each of them are going to be on a Thursday. So we hope you can enjoy those so you can learn more about the product. And what we've done here is we've taken the former the other webinars and we were trying to drill down now in, into applications and so we encourage you to go back and we have some uh, YouTube videos that are posted these webinars on so you can certainly go back there and see uh, the four webinars uh, that is going to give you a big picture of the use and applications of the unique product uh, in step warm floor so getting started you know why would uh, we use step warm floor under uh, wood floors and Really, the, the element is so unique is that it's capable of self-regulating and will not overheat. And that's the key issue with wood floors is temperatures that cannot exceed 85 degrees. Uh, the element is very thin, and it's about the thickness of a penny, about 3 64ths of an inch. So nice and thin, which make uh, applications with wood floors ideal in comparison to uh, perhaps electric cables and or hydronic tubing. So, and I'll cover on those here in, in a couple more slides. What also makes this product so unique is the ability to nail directly through the heating element without affecting its integrity or performance. There's not many, uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure of any other company or any product in the world that is capable of doing so. That makes it ideal for wood floors applications where you, you take the angst out of the wood floor installer by uh, nailing directly through the element. And you're going to see that in a couple pictures. Um, and again, you want to make sure that surface temperature is not going to exceed 85 degrees in, in, in uh, temperature. So what uh, Step Warm Floor offers to you is that it can never get above 82 degrees. It's physically impossible for this product to get above that temperature. So by the time it transfers through, the hardwood, be it uh, maybe 3 8 to a 3 quarter inch hardwood floor, the temperature is going to be a nice, uh, soothing 78, 75, 80 degrees in ideal situation. So it makes what step warm floors, how you can install it and under these wood floors, and as you can see from this picture, the guy is actually nailing directly through the element. 
So step warm floor is another reason why we'd want to use step warm floor in comparison to other products is that it's proven to be 250 percent more efficient than electric cables. And those uh, uh, you contractors or homeowners or builders or architects know that electric cables is, a, is, is very uh, cautious of putting them underneath uh, wood floors, be it a hardwood nail down, be a laminate uh, wood floors or other types. Also, the product is 200% more efficient than an electric boiler with hydronic tubing. So there's a lot of pluses that you can utilize step warm floor in creating a, a rewarding combination of uh, warm and beautiful wood floors for your customer. So a lot of people, you know, and, and I imagine if you serve, surveyed many of the wood flooring contractors out there, that you can tell them that uh, you can put uh, radiant floor heater underneath their wood floors, they'd be uh, looking at you with a strange look because uh, perhaps they haven't heard about the step warm floor product. So we look at other ways you can do that and we can certainly um, uh, lay claim to electric cables and wood floors and here's an application one where this is basically the picture you see is, is a series of sleepers that are put on uh, the floor and I would, I would suggest I would have, and this is probably a concrete subfloor perhaps, or it could be a wood subfloor, but basically there's no direct contact with the electric cables uh, with the uh, wood floor. It's just because electric cables are going to run much higher in temperature, which can have some problems with expansion and contraction of the wood, which is a big concern with drawing out moisture prematurely to uh, um, what the wood floor should acclimate at. And we'll cover that here soon too. So you know, a better way to apply this product here would be maybe with a self-leveler and cables and then you would either glue down the uh, wood floor or you'd lay a floating uh, wood floor over it like a laminate or engineered wood floor. So, so you got to be conscious of temperature. Temperatures of cables can get very, very hot. And remember we're step warm floor. We have that limited temperature. Uh, of 82 degrees at the surface of the element. So we're not going to get that too hot of ratings uh, for the floor. Another application we can certainly admit to is, is hydronic water tubing. But there is some concerns. Uh, you got to really know, you got to have a contractor who really knows how to dial these systems in. They got to understand um, the flow rate of they have them going through the tubing. They got to understand uh, the temperature of the water supply. There's a lot more things that can go wrong with these types of systems. Uh, a way to, they, they'll do this a couple of ways. They, they'll either do a staple up tubing from below, um, but you have to be very careful. So you got a staple up goes from below or in between the joists, but you got to be very careful even though these uh, tubings can run directly underneath the joists or they may be in an aluminum plate to transfer the heat. However, I've heard of stories where flooring contractors have nailed into their wood floor and it's hit a knot and that nail's deflected and hit one of the tubings and caused a basically a homemade sprinkler system in their home. So it's little things like that that are probably uh, um, not going to happen very often, but it's more care in, in being cautious of how uh, you have to install this in comparison to a uh, step warm floor. And you, another way to uh, take care of this installation would be to encapsulate with a lightweight concrete like a gypcrete, and which is going to add some floor height, about one and a half inches to the height of the floor, which tends to be a problem with areas that are non-heated or uh, you can have some transitional problems from heated spaces to non-heated spaces. Also, it's going to add weight to the floor, which then further complicates maybe some engineering, some uh, forming up trusses up there to handle the weighted load. So we look at, uh, this kind of gives you an idea of, of a slurry mix or a gypcrete mix that's going top of a floor. And this one certainly looks like to be a, um, a slab on, on grade that they're pouring in. But nevertheless, it, it's going to take that type of uh, application for, for wood floors and hydronic tubing. So there's definitely some challenges out there to overcome with wood floors. When I say wood floors, uh, I, there's, there's really categories of, of wood floors, and I'll cover that soon, but you know, it's really hardwood. Humidity is something that you have to make sure that you are maintaining at all times. That's regardless of a radiant floor system underneath the floor. Humidity is a huge concern of how to control it 
and ensuring that as you heat underneath wood floors, it can expand and contract. And I'll cover on that. You've got to really control that humidity. So there's some stable woods out there that are recommended. Uh, I have these listed, American cherry, oak, walnut, mesquite, and teak. Some are better than others, but those are more stable than perhaps something like uh, the exotic species, like a Brazilian cherry that you hear is very popular, or perhaps even a maple. Them are the ones you want to kind of stay away from. Um, uh, they're very unstable the way it is, regardless of having a, a radiant floor system installed beneath them. So we look at wood flooring types and basically we're going to categorize these into two and I purposely left out bamboo or cork because they're really going to follow underneath your engineered laminates but we'll start with the solid uh, hardwood systems and, and basically your solid hardwood can be your you know up to three quarter inch in thickness but typically they're installed at or above grade and really never recommended below grade because of their uh, the expansion contraction concerns and perhaps uh, applications installation. The wider the board, the greater the potential for gapping or expanding. So we want to make sure that these plankings uh, don't exceed more than two and a half inches. You get into that three, four inch wide plank, you've got more room for movement between the seams, more cupping, warping that might be noticeable on the floor. And another uh, thing that you want to be uh, uh, is Looking for wood that is quarter sawn is best. It can handle radiant fluctuations, radiant heat, a great deal more than plain sawn. When you look at also engineered woods or laminates, some of the ones that you're going to probably target towards uh, above or below grade applications where hardwood is not suitable. Uh, there's plenty of beautiful engineered uh, laminates out there that look very nice that just has a little bit more dimensional stable than than the, uh, the hardwood sides. Uh, these can be either nailed, some engineer types are nailed, or they're, you know, commonly are just floated on top of the subfloor. So the precautions with radiant is you want to really want to acclimate the wood to the humidity levels in the home, at least seven to ten days uh, prior to installation. I've read and researched and, and I've seen some websites that even say up to a month longer. And so you want to make sure that of course, you want to acclimate it to the humidity levels and then maintain that humidity level, which is going to be kind of difficult because that humidity is going to change based on the time of year, you know, winter, summer, spring, fall. So the key to a hardwood and radiant floor heating is to raise temperatures of these systems really slowly and incrementally. You certainly don't want to uh, turn the system on and turn it to full power you want to bring that temperature up incrementally over time. So let the thermostat kind of do its work, uh, bring it up slowly so everything kind of acclimates over time. Because when you're putting this uh, the step warm floor product underneath this wood floor, of course it's adding heat, which can dry. So you want to make sure everything's uh, 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 in the humidity level of the home, wherever stage it's at. Because once people move in there, that humidity level is going to change. So we got to you got to be very, very careful to, uh, to avoid big humidity, temperature, humidity and temperature swings. The key with designing step warm floors, and we, what we'll do here is we work with every one of your uh, quotes that you'd submit, and, and you'd give us a drawing of the application, be it a kitchen, be it a family room, and we're going to ask you, and, and it clearly states on, on the forms that we provide you, uh, to indicate the direction of the element. Uh, you always want to have the element uh, perpendicular to the direction of your wood floor planking. And so typically your wood floor is always going to run perpendicular to the joist. So normally your, your, your heating element is going to be running uh, parallel with the uh, floor trusses or the, or the joist below. And this really gives the contractor advantage of knowing where the bus braids are. And that's a key component when install installation of the wood floor is that you can nail anywhere in between the bus braids and nail, staple, however you want to apply that uh, down. And, uh, but just want to avoid that outside bus braids that carry the 24 volt uh, AC uh, low voltage power to the heating element. It also helps with running this in perpendicular. It prevents une uneven uh, planking, you know, so 
everything matches up. You, have, you don't have seams that might line up in between the spacings. As you see, I'll see if I can move my mouse on top of here. And you see some spacing. Certainly don't want that the gapping if the if the elements if the planking was running here it just eliminates that that butt joining of those uh, planks from tying onto that seam hopefully so that's just a, a nice way to eliminate the dips and sags of the planks so just a little little uh, installation there to be uh, noticing of that uh, when you start your your installation so wood floors over the wood subfloor. Uh, Typically, you're going to see us design these systems at about a three to five inch spacing between. And that is basically the spacing between uh, the elements. And we're going to continue that all the way through the floor. And really, what the, if you caught us on uh, other webinars, we kind, of we kind of say that spacing is all going to be determined by a couple of factors. One, floor covering. In this case, we're talking about wood. And if this was a, a home that needed a heat loss done, then perhaps that spacing might be tighter to accommodate the added BTU or heat load needed to heat that room. So keep that in mind that three to five inches is, is, a, is a common spacing for floor warming. Uh, typically do not space it more than five inches. Common, common number that we use is typically around four. So again, wood floors, are required not to exceed 85 degrees in temperature. That's why Step Warm Floor really uh, has their temperature limitation of the carbon embedded element uh, at 82 degrees. So n no way can that floor exceed that temperature above. So again, I kind of covered this on slow incremental temperature changes, but just want to drive that, that home because it's key for you as an installer of the product or a uh, colleague of yours or whoever it may be that you're communicating this downstream to all the contractors that may be working on that room where the floor heating element is in. So wood floor is over a wood subfloor. Now some guys will install rosin paper. I've seen it where you don't. You've seen that on that earlier slides that the guy did not have uh, rosin paper. But if you are uh, selecting rosin paper then uh, it's recommended that you install the rosin paper directly over the heating element. And you can certainly staple that rosin paper down, but you want to be a cognizant of where the bus braids are. So you want to mark the location of the element bus braids by simply just uh, putting tick marks on the, uh, on the element where they represent it, and then go on the other side and, and other room and snap a chalk line. And that way when the installer comes and hits the uh, wood floor, you're communicating to him that that chalk line represents a no-nail zone. So simply as that. So uh, underneath, uh, the, underneath the rosin paper, I've seen where the element can go on top too. So uh, builder's choice there or contractor's choice. One of the key things too is, is that during the heating process or during, I'm sorry, during the process of staining or sealing, it's recommended that you do not turn on or energize the heating elements. Uh, during this time. You could probably turn on the heating elements during the time that you're hitting the floor, but turn it off temporarily. Of course, you're <laughs> worried about that expanding contraction, but just in case you have large seams that are in the wood, we certainly don't want that stain or seal to uh, penetrate any holes or any uh, uh, seams in there that could maybe hit the heating element. And if you've uh, joined us on other webinars, you'll know exactly what I mean by not allowing solvents or any glues or adhesives from uh, hitting the surface of the heating element. That is a key. And I'll cover on that why we don't use adhesives. So we look at the floor heating on wood floors. And this is the point that we're going to always, always drive home. Um, you're always going to add insulation if, if you can. Now we understand that not all uh, wood subfloors may be accessible underneath. You may have a finished room where you simply cannot gain access. You got the benefit probably of that finished room being heated. So what we're trying to do is minimize that heat loss. So when that heat is uh, generated here by the heating element, we want it to force it up into the room and not allow that heat to travel down. I kind of refer to heat like water. It's kind of like it always follows the, the path of least resistance. So if you can stop it from going one way, you want to uh, Insulate it. Now you can use this insulation however you can use bl uh, blankets, uh, craft faced fiberglass, uh, rigid foam 
to uh, place that inside. So um, we may be having some technical difficulties on hearing me. So I'm not sure what does. Um, we're going to have just one second, sorry for the temporary thing, we're having problems for us hearing me yet. Okay, we can hear me? Okay, sorry about that everyone. Um, but here, we want to we touch this place with the insulation, touch this point a little bit more, that uh, throw the insulation in there and you're going to ensure performance of the heating system and also uh, really energy efficiency. Why do we want to allow that heat to drive that down, especially to a subfloor that is accessible like a, like a crawl space? Some are the ones that are critical to, to insulate. So anytime you're going to talk to one of our sales reps here at HeatMyFloors.com, they're going to recommend insulation. They're always, always going to drive that point home. No adhesives or solvents. And I want to, want to state this too. I, mean, I touched on it a little bit earlier, but you know some guys will put wood floors down and they'll staple, they'll first glue and nail or staple the hardwood down. And we just want to make sure that you uh, are educated to not put adhesives in direct contact with the step warm floor heating element. What it happens is that the carbon embedded uh, element there really stops it from conducting where the, where the glue is touching. Uh, so if you do have uh, adhesives that uh, you want to glue down, you may want to uh, put in some type of uh, uh, a sheet in between, like maybe a, um, like an underlayment, like a thin layer, like a birch wood type of underlayment that you can glue to first. So your layers are going to be perhaps a wood subfloor, the heating element, uh, you may have a, a, a birch wood, like an eighth inch in birth wo birch wood, I'm sorry, and then your, your hardwood floor. Then you can glue your hardwood floor down. But de definitely do not glue directly to the heating element. Another application to solve if you're doing glue downs is that you could do a, uh, an approved self-level over the step warm floor heating elements, but of course that's going to add cost, and it's also going to add height. So we're still going to have that problems with transitional uh, step downs or step ups, if you will, from heated to non-heated spaces. And another option too, you know, one that we want to point out, and it's going to be covered here in uh, our fourth webinar series here, I think on April 4th, that Tracy's going to touch on uh, on heating between the joists. So if it's a staple down uh, and with a glue down application of the wood floor and you have access down uh, down below, you can certainly utilize a staple up approach to provide heat. Uh, again, we're going to insulate underneath that floor. So, encourage you to join in on that uh, webinar here in the future to learn more about staple ups. So, wood flooring on concrete slab, basically we're looking at engineered or laminate uh, wood types are, of course, more uh, conducive for these types of environments. Uh, that's not going to change. Uh, basically, it's going to be the same layout as we discussed before, that the element is going to still be installed perpendicular to the direction of the planking. Of course, we have no choice here on a slab on, on grade or below grade, but uh, we just want you to indicate which way you're going to lay that planking on the floor. That way we can design the system and customize it, especially for your application. Um, we're going to put those elements in a perpendicular direction. So keep that in mind. But wood flooring, laminates, we see a lot of wood uh, laminates out there in, in, in basements. I know oh, four or five years ago, these are really prevalent uh, back when people were really uh, doing a lot of uh, remodeling in, in their basements. Uh, so certainly can do this. It's a great way to warm up and make that uh, environment, which typically, I don't care if you're here in Minnesota or you're if in uh, in I don't know if you, uh, parts of uh, Colorado that you know your basements are cold. Your lower level is always going to be cold, and especially you can compound that by a, a surface as tile or in wood is going to be cold. So this is a great way to uh, make that uh, surface warm and, and inviting to uh, be in for like a family room or bedroom. So. The thing is, too, when you have a concrete floor, you're probably thinking ahead of me right now. Well, how do I how do I insulate this? Is you know I'm not going to be putting down um, rigid styrofoam on here, or 
certainly not going to put any uh, uh, blanket insulation uh, fiberglass. So there is uh, there's uh, products out there I'll cover here in a second, but uh, we want to make sure you're you're insulating that, especially on slab on grades. They are notorious for pulling that heat out to the outside edge. So we're always going to recommend some type of insulation to capture that energy savings, but also capture comfort rather than letting that drive down through the floor into the concrete because heat follows cold. We want to have that heat drive up through that laminate or engineered wood. So insulation adds floor height, of course, but we have products out there and you can get the, these same type of products probably in a local distributor near you. Um, and these products are typically a rolled cork out there is going to come in a quarter inch or a half inch thickness and, and be roughly uh, four feet wide. And those are great ways to roll that out. You're going to have to glue and roll that down. And that acts as a good thermal break between the cold concrete floor and the heating elements so we can transfer that heat up. Two of the products that we carry, I, I have one of them listed actually because it's dealing with wood, is called Cerazorb. And we really sell that locally. Uh, we don't ship that product all over the country because of uh, of just shipping costs is, is exorbitant and doesn't make it worthwhile. So I recommend you to check in with the flooring store and, and look at cork, cork uh, rolled cork. Another a way to uh, take care of is use like a healthier choice, uh, like a commercial uh, solution pad that you can put down on, the, on a floor. It's very thin and is not going to add a lot of heights, but give you that, uh, that buffer there to prevent that heat from going down. So some installation tips of, uh, of uh, wood floors and access to subfloor. So basically I'm going to cover, you know, here's an application where you have total access, either a crawl space or you have an open room down below where you can see the joist spacing um, and you can help and aid in installation. So it really, anytime you hear you get a, a customer that wants a wood floor and they, and they want to utilize the step warm floor system as a mean to heat, means to heat the room, uh, access to the subfloor is one of the key questions you want to have because it really makes it for a easy installation. Uh, in comparison, obviously, to a non-accessible subfloor, and I'll cover that here soon. But uh, it really allows for um, easy installation of stapling the product down and then uh, laying out the heating element. So basically what you want to do is lay it down, staple the element, and, and basically drill some holes. There's a couple of ways you can do it, and you'll find this once you start working with the product. It's kind of like riding a bicycle as a kid, right? So you write it for the first time, you're falling down a few times until you get it here, and all of a sudden you'll be uh, working out your speed over time. So what I would recommend in these places where it's dictated by these, or uh, I got them red circles here, is basically is where you could drill some uh, three-quarter inch holes through the subfloor. And, and what that's doing is that's making that step warm for a connection and getting it recessed below. Because the connections here, what you can see is that's basically a Stay, uh, or a uh, aluminum crimp that gets extended to a wire and then it gets uh, finished off with tape. And that can add a little rise if we don't recess that below the subfloor. You're going to make good friends with the, uh, with the hardwood floor uh, uh, or even the laminate guys out there and laying that floor to, to make that floor as flat as possible. So what I would recommend, three-quarter inch hole, drill it through. It may not even have to be that big, but somewhere where you tape this off and you can recess it below the subfloor, but then drop the wire directly down. Now this may be a little bit difficult for you to visualize, but um, there's uh, definitely some uh, information there on the installation that can guide you through this. Or you can certainly call your Heat My Floors uh, sales rep and they can go through the process with you. So this is easy to just make an element connections, but um, and then running wires back to the transformer, wherever that may be. And, and I encourage you to go back to the other webinars and listen to those and watch those on the installation side. And you, you certainly will see where we're kind of covering that installation over a, um, on wood subfloors. So if you're act, acting uh, or putting the, the, the elements down, you've made wires down, now it's a time that... Uh, you want, you know, if it's being covered by a rosin paper, that you want to start snapping some chalk, chalk lines to represent where the heating element bus braids are. So that gives the, the hardwood flooring guy 
or a laminate guy, however they're going to adhere that down to, uh, staple that down to or nail that they would not going to hit the bus braids. And again, here's the key that we want to insulate that subfloor uh, to uh, push heat upward and not allow it to come down. Now, one thing you have to do when you cover that insulation, insulation part is that you know, you got to really meet your customer's expectations. And of course, we got an element that's 82. If we can insulate it, we're going to have a, a warmer floor, of course, than if we do not insulate it. So if you're dealing with a non-accessible subfloor that you cannot insulate, make sure you inform your customer what they can expect. Um, it's probably not going to be in that that 78, 80 degree temperatures. It could be uh, could be you know in that uh, 74, 75, for example. Who knows? I don't know if it's a heated crawl space. I doubt it, or if it's a heated room down below. So keep those things in mind too, so you can uh, handle customers' expectations. But certainly don't want to oversell something that you say is going to be 80 degrees at the floor, and you're installing over uninsulated crawl space and that he can just go down. So just keep that in mind. How about access now to no subfloors? Um, now these are very, it can be very difficult and really time labor, uh, uh, labor to do, a lot of labor, a lot of time. Um, you want to lay out and staple the heating element as we discussed before. You want to cover element with rosin paper, snap chalk lines, and do everything you've done. Uh, as you've done before. But what gets to be a problem, we'll back up a little bit, is you want to make sure that, um, and you can see here, we've got a chalk line here represented here. So when you're nailing that down, this one actually happens to be or parallel with the uh, bus braids of the heating element. But what we're going to recommend, you know, is that you almost have to get out the carpentry tools to do this. And, and I've, uh, we've done some Bath Crashers TV shows here and where we've had to get a little tool called the roto zip, and some guys might have a, a router. A roto zip is just easier to handle, but as you can imagine, if you're putting wires on top of a floor, you have to get them from element to element, but then these element wires, the secondary wires, have to make it to the transformer, and certainly you're not going to put those and expose those on top of the floor for risk of um, nailing into, but also floor heights that you can have uneven uh, gapping uh, between the planks. So um, we recommend getting a router to recess the wires uh, below the uh, subfloor, you know, which is going to us a nice flat wood floor installation. There's uh, also you may want to route uh, your routed path there that you're, that you're using that uh, roto zip to make sure you're routing easy pass for the for the contractors coming to lay the wood floor so we can easily see those in place. So it gets to be a, a, a lot more difficult time so you need to uh, make more time in when you're uh, bidding out uh, these types of systems where you've got no access to the room below. And as you can see from here, let's say hypothetically here, and this is kind of a difficult uh, image to to view, but you can see uh, that we have the elements. Typically, that's what you're going to see at about a three-inch space, and this might be a kitchen that you have room for some kitchen cabinets that are along here, and it could be a sink that's going to be eventually right here. But uh, everything's going to get laid out three to four to five inches, where we want to have it designed, and uh, the baseline cabinet looks is drawn right here. It looks like, and so that heat's going to transfer out. But the key is, is that you're going to have these wires are going to be exposed. And I'm going to blow this up a little bit for you. And this kind of gives you just, again, you might have to go look at our, our other webinars because we don't have enough time to go through all the installation in this one. But you can see how the wires, and I'll kind of highlight them here. You know, we got the wires, the secondary wires that are going to be surfaced mounted because we've got a non-accessible uh, subfloor. And so basically what you want to do is, is peel this element back maybe temporarily, and then you want to take that rotor zip and basically router it out in advance so you can lay the wire in there. And that rotor zip worked pretty good for us on the show, is that it was a 1 8 inch bit, it, it routed out just a little bit more than that, and the secondary wires that are connected to the step warm floor heating element fit nice and snug in there, they didn't roll up, they didn't fall out of it, so it's a, it's a great way to recess them down and now when your guy is laying his hardwood floor and he knows as he, he, he approaches it, 
to uh, he can see where that and he can try to avoid uh, nailing through those secondary wires. So just a little helpful tip that uh, you may want to uh, think about on your next application. And one of the key things, and I kind of stressed it on a little bit before, is that you want to make sure you're communicating with every contractor that's going to be touching that floor. Because uh, a lot of times it could be, it could be a, uh, the contractor, a different contractor from the electrician who initially installed it to a, a wood flooring contractor to the finishing contractor uh, who was laying the, uh, uh, the finish or the, the urethane on top of the henome. You want to make sure that everybody knows the process that this goes down, that everything gets communicated downstream, uh, that there's no glue, no solvents, or any metal that can come in contact with the heating element. Um, so you want to make sure you make that point clear so you don't have any problems after. Uh, again, you want to snap chalk lines over the heating element. I was just going to represent where those bus braids are and avoid hitting them. And again, the element should always be perpendicular to the direction of the wood planking. So there's many things that you need to communicate down, but uh, you know, if you've got, you got wood floors, it's a great business that you can add uh, revenue to your business by providing these applications for customers who don't think that they can install uh, radiant floor systems under their wood floors too. So uh, keep that in mind as a way to uh, generate some revenue. Uh, some helpful websites that I would look into. Um, there's many more than this, but this is some of my uh, my favorite ones that I like to look look into from time to time for doing some uh, research on. And the Hardwood Council, you can also go out to uh, National Wood Floor and Association. That's an, also a great one on, on wood floors. And they really talk wood floors and radiant floor heaves, the do's and don'ts, and the carefuls of, of especially moisture um, and, and control in that. Uh, another one, and I've got to tip my hat to the guys at the Radiant Professional Alliance. Uh, those guys there are, are, are a wealth of information that you can uh, gleam on your installation with these uh, applications with step warm floor and wood flooring too. And I also encourage you, uh, go out to the manufacturer site at warmfloor.com and you can see all these spec sheets that are written for wood floors and really kind of guide you through the process. And of course, you got us here at, at uh, Heat My Floors that we have a wealth of talented and educated people about the product that can guide you through step-by-step -step, um, planning of the installation so you can plan on making, making money but not having callbacks with it. Little things like that, we can uh, guide you through that whole process. So I always encourage you to call, call us or uh, you can also step at our, or stop at our website at keepmyfloors.com. So I encourage you to do that. Okay, so we're going to remind you again to check out the future webinars that we have um, coming up. And Andy's going to talk about carpeting. Carpeting is a key thing. There's a lot of applications. In fact, we, we specify carpet applications in basements just as much as we do bathroom floors, believe it or not. So it's a great way to uh, bring revenue into your business by providing warm and inviting spaces down in the basements or at main levels of homes. So yeah, a lot of times those are carpeted or sometimes they're wood too or tile. Uh, followed by Steve will be talking to us on uh, March 28th here and he'll be covering about tile floors. and. Tile floors is also very common with radiant floor heating, very common with step warm floor, but he'll get into more application sides with using you know, the, the ability to put the element either on top of the uh, cement board or below the cement board or the use of DITRA, um, the use of tiled uh, floors and step warm floor in a wet location like a shower or a shower bench. Uh, many, many, many applications that are out there, but we're going to drill into that to give you an idea that you can use these uh, uh, in more than just uh, carpeting, wood, and tile floors. And then finally, we're going to follow up with Tracy's going to bring us to the home stretch in regards to staple up in between the Joyce applications. And I encourage you to all listen to this one as well because this is a way for you as a contractor to look at ways of revenue because you're in and out of homes all the time 
and it's a way that you can observe that if somebody has a tiled floor in their bathroom that perhaps they didn't heat it due to budget constraints at the time or may, perhaps they bought the home from somebody else who didn't put the system in. Now that's a perfect way to um, give them the information that you can staple up the step warm floor heating all between the joists and insulate and drive that heat right up through that finished tile floor or bring it to the kitchen. Perhaps the kitchen's got a, uh, it has a uh, wood floor in it that wasn't heated, but it's cold. It's a great way to add on sales to your business. So I encourage you to do, do that and also utilize us. We're going to be here to help you again through the quoting process and we get some drawings. We give you a free design, no obligation quote that's going to be professionally done and custom designed for each one of your uh, rooms in the same house or each one of your clients' places. So I encourage you to use that as well. So with that said, I'm going to uh, thank you for attending and I'm going to get into the questions and answer period. Uh, there's gives a little snapshot of our, of our uh, Heat My Floors team that are here. So any questions and answers, I'd be happy just to go ahead and type them in. We're kind of we're probably going to finish a little bit earlier. I thought I was going to be probably around about a little late. So if it's this is encouraging for you, uh, you can all stand up and applaud for me right now and get out of your easy seat and easy chair, I'm sorry, and give me a high five, if you will, because we're probably going to get done a little bit earlier, which isn't going to hurt and get back to the, to the game. So come to, the, come to the questions, I encourage you again to uh, just fire these in and if we run out of time for some reason, uh, we certainly will call you or email you personally on your application. And one of the questions says, what kind of a turnaround time would I expect to receive a quote with a step warm floor product? And I can answer that, that a lot of times it's, it's very quickly. Uh, sometimes it's uh, typically one to two days we can turn it around. Um, Depends on how complex the job is. If it's a whole entire home, it may take a little bit uh, longer to have that, that uh, designed and catted out and get it back to you. So um, make sure you give us a little bit of leeway time, knowing that it does take us one, one to two days. Three days, I think, tops in getting something done. But we can get these uh, uh, quotes around to you. And basically everything's going to be listed, uh, the price on it is going to be at list price. So some guys have shared this with their customer, knowing you know, they show them the layout and everything, and they may use that list price as their, their quoted price plus labor to the consumer. But then, of course, the, you as a contractor receive the 20% discount from us. Also, do you have a follow-up question to that one was, do you have the materials in stock? And without question, we have the... Uh, we have the element here. We have uh, uh, thousands of feet of the element, transformer, wires, crimps, connections, everything that, everything that you need for materials uh, um, when it comes to the step warm floor product we have here in stock. So we can have those out the door within you know, one or two days or less from the initial time of the order. Another question is, what if you, if, if you get your floor wet? spill water on it or mop, will it hurt the heating element? Now that's a good question because uh, the heating element uh, can have, if you had water directly hitting the, hitting the heating element, you could short it out. And, but it's only going to short out uh, the uh, breaker that's inside the transformers. So once that system dries, the breaker just has to be reset, a, thump, a simple push in a resettable button on it, resettable uh, part of that breaker and you're back and, and, and working. It's not going to ruin the heating element. I think you're going to have much more problems with water damage due to uh, especially you know getting in the wood or underneath wood like a laminate. Um, and we kind of shared that story here with my own fuba here that I've done with uh, dishwashers. <laughs> um, <clears throat> if you're uh, curious to what I did with the dishwasher with suds and water, well I encourage you to uh, email me and I'll give you the full scoop on it. I won't tell the masses on this great uh, webinar network about what my <laughs> problem I did, but you can only imagine. Uh, another question is, is the application the same with bamboo flooring? Yeah, the, the same you know, thing. You know, the nice thing with bamboo, it's a very renewable product. Uh, I forget what it grows you know, in, the for, in, in, the, uh, in the jungle there, but it, it grows exponentially. Uh, daily. So 
but yeah, with all question, the bamboo planking is not going to be anything different with uh, this. You're still going to lay it the element perpendicular to the direction of uh, uh, the heating element. So nothing else changing. Bamboo is very forgiving of heat. Um, some of them uh, that uh, you know get some very nice luxury uh, looking bamboo systems that are out there that we've seen. So. Another question is when routing the subfloor to create channels for wire, does this reduce the structure integrity of the subfloor? And uh, that's a good question. Um, and I got this from Steve there. Good question. Thank you. Um, really, you're only you're only get, you're going to set your router depth uh, at a very very minimal depth, probably about an eighth inch. And it's going to you know these rotor zips are going to grind through that uh, that wood floor like uh, like a knife through butter. It really, is going to be simple. So you don't have to recess them. Uh, um, an inch in because you only maybe perhaps got a subfloor that might be only three quarters of an inch thick. So you just got to get enough to get it below the subfloor depth that uh, when you're laying your planking, you're not going to come across the uh, the height of the of the wires. So keep that in mind. It it causes a little, you know, guys aren't you know especially electricians. You know, electricians aren't really geared with. Uh, routers in their in their trucks today. You know they got the screws and hammers and and wire pullers and stuff like that. The wire strippers, I should say, but they certainly don't carry uh, routers with them. So keep that things in mind there. If you do have uh, um, applications where you need to create these channels in there, incidentally too, with routering under you know, I'm sorry, with concrete applications. And let's say you put it a a, a uh, insulation down like our Cerasorb, which is only you know less than a quarter inch, or perhaps even cork, that's a quarter inch thickness. You can create p channels there to lay the wire in as well. So uh, your planking is going to lay flat. So you can create that channels easily by cutting that out with the with the blade and creating the channel there to place the wire in. Now you're going to make friends with the with the wood flooring installer. Another question here is regarding the 85 degree max temp. To what type of wood floors does this apply? Natural wood only or laminate? And that's that is a that's a great question. Thank you. Um, really, it's I I think it's a position from what I've read is the NWFA recommends no more than 85 degrees. I think it's and I could be wrong. Is that I think it's really more geared to natural wood only because of its moisture. Uh, imbalance there that you can cause that e premature expansion contraction, um, but of course, it's also that temperature is more so to a healthy environment that you're creating there. That if you're standing on the floor at a prolonged time at 85 degrees temperatures, it, as it it's almost uncomfortable to be in. You know, a lot of people think, oh, warmer is better, but actually warmer can, you know, can dehydrate you more. It can be actually uh, not very good for your circulatory system if it's too warm. So um, I think it's a, something that you want to stay in, in, in that 80, 85, under 85 degrees. And certainly the step warm floor heating element is going to limit you uh, to that. Uh, that element is going to be a 7.8 watt heating element that is not capable of reaching uh, 85 degrees. In fact, it self-regulates only at 82 degrees. So um, you're never going to reach that 85 degree max temperature. So natural wood or only, let's uh, we'll just do what the NWFA recommends. Of uh, and and also, of course, uh, the Radiant Panel Association always recommends that that temperature limitations on wood floors. Uh, another good follow-up question here, Steve, is as uh, also does the thickness of the wood matter regarding 85 degrees? I mean, it's it it does because of course you know you think that a three eighths inch wood versus a three quarter inch wood the three quarters is definitely going to have a higher R value in it and reduce that heat transfer from the element through the floor so the thickness of the wood um, will come into play now which leads me to to you know as a suggestion if you have a wood floor going on a the subfloor and the subfloor is incapable of insulating from underneath. Perhaps now is where you'd recommend running a thinner uh, thickness of wood. I should say the thickness could maybe maybe it's a, a six millimeter, seven millimeter uh, type of laminate or some type of engineers or some uh, thinner thing so you can get better transfer th through. Of course, if we put higher heat up 
or a higher R value up, that heat is going to have a more difficult time to try to transfer uh, through there. So um, very good questions on that as well. Um, wood floors uh, are beautiful, and you can still provide heating uh, to them. So just think about the applications that you have out there. Think about the applications, you know, and Tracy's going to hit that on on the staple up. You, you probably have wood floors that you've dealt with in the past that there's applications you can go out there and install the radiant floor, uh, the step warm floor product uh, in between the joists. So it gives you a, a lot of app options that way. Um, wood floors, too, is uh, it's, it's becoming, you know, probably one of the most uh, uh, sought after luxury items in a home. Uh, it's uh, the hard surfaces are really taken over in comparison to the carpeted. So it's really getting into your your hardwoods, your laminates, engineered woods, and then you know going to the tile surfaces, and then followed by carpet. As far as what is sought after by a homeowner that we're seeing, and if you're kind of a, a radiant guru geek like I am, then you kind of follow these national. Uh, there's a there's some good websites like the National Flooring Trends is a good one to go out there and kind of find out what the consumers are buying, what they're looking at, what they're thinking of. So um, there's a lot of resources out there. Use us as a resource on on these applications. So I don't have any more questions, and I think I'm I'm up a little bit of time. I'm up here a little bit earlier. So again, want to thank you for for joining us, and to remind you again that we have these webinars here and. Uh, we have limited number of seats, about 100. So <laughs> if you've got some friends out there, certainly ask them to join. You've got some colleagues there at your work, uh, ask them to join. And you can certainly give them our website. And you can get on our, our website there, and you can guide you right through how to get on, the, on onto our webinars. I Hopefully this was uh, something that uh, you learned. Uh, applications, it's tough to cover this in such a short time because it can be Broad. I hope that I've kind of narrowed it down for you in this application of wood floors, and and um, want to thank you again for joining us tonight. And hopefully, we'll see you at our next webinars. Take care for now, and good night.